Today we're gonna make Italian beef stew. We're gonna serve it over polenta, which is one of my favorite ways to do it, but you can also put this over egg noodles. You can put it over mashed potatoes. Let's get into all the ingredients right now. I always like to go over all the ingredients with you before we start making it. So this is just the easiest way to, for me to make a video for you. It's also gonna be the easiest way for you to make a dish for yourself. This is beef chuck, it was $7.99 a pound. This is from Whole Foods. You can get chuck sometimes in a supermarket for even as cheap as $3.99 a pound. Now, I wanna just tell you, the, the recipe on my site, I, we're not even, we, we do the vegetables first and we toss them in, the meat in, we get only a little bit of color on it before we add the wine. It's totally fine that way. You're cooking it in the oven, it's gonna build up a ton of flavor regardless, but today we'll sear it, we'll, we'll do that. It's the same recipe and it's, gonna, it's really gonna taste the same in the end. I have a cup of red wine, I'm using, uh, this Toscana right here, Bonfi, and this is about a $14 bottle. We're using one cup, so we're only using about three to four dollars worth of wine. Beef stock, I use beef base, better than bullion beef base. Now this stuff is great. This is from Costco, so you get 76 servings. What that means is you get 76 cups of beef stock. So we need two cups of low sodium beef stock for this recipe. I have a little bit of rosemary and two bay leaves. That onion I cut didn't look so good, it was a little, a little old, I guess. I could have just grabbed another onion from the closet, but I said, you know what? Let me let me just use it. Let me show you like kind of a real world experience what, what I'm sure a lot of you guys are dealing with. That's two stalks of celery. So what is this here? This is about, it's about a cup. And three medium carrots. And that turns out to roughly be about one and a half cups. I have about 10 ounces of regular Baby Bella mushrooms. These are fresh mushrooms. And I know I feel like I'm always talking about Costco, but this is one of the best things you can buy at Costco. This is a dry, mushroom mix. It's assorted and they're really good mushrooms. For a stew like this, you don't even need to rehydrate them. So normally if you were gonna make like a pasta dish or whatnot, you would put hot water over them, reconstitute the mushrooms. They would, like a little bit of mushrooms would turn into a lot more mushrooms once they, once they rehydrate. The stew itself is gonna rehydrate them. So if you wanna use dried mushrooms, go ahead and you're just gonna to toss them in. I was able to get fresh mushrooms, which is what is in the recipe. So I figured I just wanted to keep things consistent for you guys because so many of you now are going over to my website. When I put up a new video now, over a thousand, thousand to 1500 people are going to my website just for that one recipe. So I really try to get them to be close to in line. So I'm not getting all those questions back and forth about, oh, this wasn't exactly how the video was. And it is a little different today, but it's, but it's still basically the same. Now you can serve this dish with bread. Just beef stew with bread, crusty bread would be great. You could serve it over mashed potatoes. You could serve it over egg noodles. My favorite way to do it by far, by far is to use polenta. I have a Dutch oven here. Just heat it up to medium low. I have regular olive oil here. You could use extra virgin as well. About maybe two tablespoons, not so much. You could put in the carrots, onions, and celery at the same time. You don't have to put the onions in first. You don't, okay? I chop these things relatively coarse. If you like them even coarser for your stew, just do that. We're gonna coat these with the olive oil and we're gonna let these cook for about five, 10 minutes. Let them get a little soft. Then we'll add the mushrooms in here. Do need a little bit more oil in there. It's not enough. All right, so they've been going for about five, seven minutes. They're not really soft enough yet, but that's fine. Let's get the mushrooms in. Mix them around in the oil as well. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit for these mushrooms. As the mushrooms cook, they're gonna release some of their water. Once they get the water out, we'll just move this to the side and then we'll sear up the beef. You can sear the beef in a large pan like I'm gonna do a stainless pan, or you can just add it in here. 
Okay, you can see some of the water starting to release from the mushrooms. All right, take that off. Got the big pan again we're gonna use. Now, I'm using the big pan just so I can do this in one shot. I'm gonna turn my heat to medium, let this pan heat up for about three minutes before we put the meat down. While my pan is heating up, I'm gonna season the beef right here with salt and pepper. Dry it off well if it's not very dry. We wanna get a good sear on this. How much salt? Just like this much, you know, just give it a good, good amount. Probably if you want to know exactly, maybe one and a half teaspoons here, maybe two teaspoons. You wanna go for about one teaspoon of salt, kosher salt per pound of meat. We have two and a half pounds of meat here, but I cut some of the fat off. Probably have like more like two pounds. Okay, just pat it in there. Try to flip everything over. So we're gonna put just about one or two tablespoons of olive oil, not so much, just enough to coat it. Now you could definitely flour your meat too, which would give it even more, uh, more color. And I think I'm gonna be able to fit all the meat here. When you put it down, just put it down away from you. If you put it down towards you, then it's gonna go all over you. You don't want that. Yeah, we're good here. Try to spread it out a little bit more and then just let it get brown a couple minutes, turn it over, do the other side and build in some nice flavor here. Again, you don't have to do this. You could have put this meat right in the pot. It gets a ton of flavor in the oven without it. We're going the extra mile here today. That's what we're doing. And then you can turn it when it starts to get a little bit of color, okay? There's enough color on there, it's not perfect. Going to put in one cup of red wine. This is a dry red wine that we're using, it's a blend. Any dry red wine is fine, so anything you want. Okay, I'm gonna turn this heat to high. As it's cooking, you can take your wooden spoon and we're gonna dislodge any of those brown bits. We're not calling it fond. We do not call it fond on this channel, ever, ever. It's not gonna happen. About half of it has gone. You can let it go more. I'm gonna put the beef stock in right now. Two cups of beef stock. All right, I'm gonna let this cook for about five more minutes, bring it up to a boil, and then we're gonna combine all this with, with our veggies. And, then, and that's it, then we're gonna get it in the oven. I just did a little switch back and forth. Now, this I had over on my stovetop over there. I just had it cooking pretty low. So here's how these vegetables look right now. Right about there. They're fairly soft and take a spoon and just get them all in. All right, so I got it all in without making a big mess. One thing I forgot to mention to you, I seasoned the, the vegetables, mushrooms with salt and pepper, just a little bit, probably like a half teaspoon of salt, a little bit of pepper, just to kind of build those flavors up. Now the beef is very well seasoned. I'm gonna mix this all together here. We're gonna cook this in the oven right now, covered, completely covered. But after about an hour and a half, take off the lid, let it keep cooking. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna further reduce that liquid it's gonna concentrate it. You'll get a little bit more color on the beef on top of it. I uh, forgot to put in the rosemary and the bay leaf. So don't forget that. Use one large bay leaf or two small ones. Just get it in the broth. And the rosemary leaves, you can just pull them off. You can even put the whole entire thing, stick stem in and everything and you just have to discard it. All right, right back in the oven again. So it's been in the oven for about 50 minutes. You can make your polenta in advance. A lot of people will do a four to one proportions. I like to do five to one. The more, the higher amount of liquid you have, the longer it's gonna to take to cook. I have one and a half cups of polenta here and I'm gonna use seven and a half cups of water. You know, I got two and a half pounds of meat, but by just making a little bit more polenta, you can extend the meal so much more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the heat up to high on my burner and I have seven and a half cups of water in my kettle to speed up the process. I should have a higher, larger pan, but I don't, should be using the Dutch oven, but that's in the oven with the, with the stew. And just mix it around, stir it. You can stir it in either direction you want. 
This process takes an hour, roughly, maybe, maybe 50 minutes, but in my experience, about an hour. Once it starts to, to thicken a little bit and starts to splash you, and it's gonna start splashing you, then you can lower the heat, and then you just keep stirring it as you cook it. Okay, so it's, spl it's splattering now. I'm gonna lower the heat. And I like to go down to about a four out of 10. If it starts splattering too much, you can take it off the heat for a second, put it on a hot plate, bring it back. Mark your clock and just let it, let it cook, keep stirring it, just stay in the kitchen, don't leave the kitchen. See how much liquid is in there still? Probably about an inch and a half of liquid. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the cover off and let it finish in the oven like that. And that's gonna really, really condense it. It's gonna get more color on the top of it. It's been about an hour on the polenta. Probably could go a little bit longer, but I'm gonna season it now. And when I wanna reheat it later, I just add a little bit of liquid back. Just start off with a little bit as you heat it up just to get it right back to that consistency again. I have about four tablespoons of butter. I'm using four tablespoons for one and a half cups of polenta. I'm gonna start with about a teaspoon of kosher salt, but I'm gonna need more. Even with this Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese, we're gonna need more salt, it's probably. I tested my meat, it was kind of close to done, but it definitely should go a little bit longer. Put another teaspoon of salt in there. It is done, I tested it, I'll test it again right now. You can see how dark the top is, all the meat. And then you can take two forks, all right? And then you can just try to pull it apart. And the meat's pulling apart fairly easily. Some pieces might be a little tougher than others. That was about two and a half hours on there. Could easily go for three hours though. You gotta cook it until until it's tender. That's that's the most important thing. Okay, and as far as the liquid amount here, okay, we don't have too much liquid, but I would like it a little thicker. So I am going to thicken it with cornstarch. Turn this up to about medium high. Just let it bubble. And then here's my slurry. I have one tablespoon of cornstarch and one ounce of water. All right, put that right in there. It's starting to bubble immediately. And turn it up, turn it down. Let's bring the taste tester down. Tender, it's well seasoned, does not need any salt. This is the consistency that you're looking for, like this. Kind of like scrambled eggs almost. If you don't want to use polenta, use bread. I have a beautiful loaf of bread here and you can like scrape up all the sauce from the Dutch oven, which is great. I'm glad to see you didn't wear a white shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> or Jets. He's not a Jets fan, by the way. Yeah, I'm actually not a Jets fan. Why don't you try it, James? Let's see what you think. <laughs> I love beef stew. What do you think? It's delicious. Right? What's your, what's your personal favorite, James? Um... What do you mean? You could have it with bread instead of the polenta. You could have it with like noodles. It. Yeah, I was about to say that. Noodles? Like yeah. But the polenta is good. A very special thanks to Patreon producers Chris Whalen, Steve Winitsky, Paul Walter Hauser, Elizabeth Shaw, Joe Hardage, John Andolino, Kenneth Parker, Matt Fisher, Mike Tamburino, Richard C., and Tom Bronca. Mm -hmm.